Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Board Masters with me, Chris Mullins. And me, Chris Reid. And we are going to be reviewing Canopy, following on from our gameplay video a few days ago, which I'll link down below. I will link the unboxing as well because this game is absolutely stunning, so definitely check it out. But as always with the review, the first category we'll be covering that because it's the art style and theme, and then we'll go on to components, accessibility, replayability, and the overall gameplay. So. Did you want to take the lead, Chris, and dive into the art style? Because that's going to be a nice one to talk about, I think. Yeah, I think so as well. Um, I mean, obviously, it's it's based loosely around um, the, the Amazon rainforest mm -hmm. um, and the biodiversity within the Amazon rainforest. You've got these beautiful um, cards, um, linen finished, great quality. Um, the art style is beautiful. Um, the depiction of the different animals and plants, um, the colours used, I think are just fantastic. Um, so big fan of the art style and obviously the theming as well. Um, yeah, being, the theme runs through it really nicely. Yeah. And being, I think similar to Rail Camera that we reviewed the other week, it really complements the mechanics as well. Uh, yeah. Which is always appreciated, especially when it's combined with such beauty. Mm. Yeah, I really like the theme of it. You know, I'm quite an environmentally friendly person, so yeah, seeing the natural world and <laughs> yeah, and actually picking up on that, I did a video last week about where I, I use canopy in ex as an example against endangered. We're talking about where the board game makers and designers need to do more for climate change and things. Because, for example, endangered. If you check out the unboxing for that. It comes obviously in shrink wrap as most games do. And then I think I had about 10 spare leftover plastic bags, mm -hmm. which is a, in a game which is all about conservation and protecting animals yeah. and <laughs> turtles dying of plastic as one of the scenarios mm. to then have the game full of plastic. And then Canopy, which arrived in printed brown paper. And then there's no plastic in the box whatsoever. Yeah. All the cards are in the little... Uh, paper sleeves, the minis or meeples as you can see are, are wood, mm. there is no plastic to be seen and yeah very minimalistic wasn't it and it's it's fantastic for the environment it well as good as a board game can ever be because obviously it's lots of cardboard and things which is, yeah. is an ideal but yeah. I'd like to think it's recycled cardboard but <laughs> yeah certainly not single use <laughs> getting plenty of usage but I just love the effort they went to, to make this as carbon efficient and green as possible. And I think actually as part of the Kickstarter campaign, they donated or planted a number of trees. Yeah. Uh, depending on how many backers there were and, and you could actually enough. donate a bit more in the pledge manager if you wanted to do that, which I did. So yeah, it's a bit of a sidetrack that doesn't really fit into any of the other categories, but I think it's, it's a big win and a fantastic example to the rest of the industry i think mm. i think particularly for the audience you know it's this game is obviously trying to target uh, it's going yeah. to target you know environmental friendly people and people who enjoy biodiversity so yeah yeah and sort of going back to the theme i love the way the cards do complement the theme it's it's the way like the bromeliads you get points if you've got one, then you get more points if you've mm -hmm. got two. But if you ever go above two, it destroys your ecology pretty much. And instead of getting seven points, you go down to minus three. There are other, the orchids, if you've got too much of any single type of weather. So if you've got too much sun or too much rain, then that kills the orchids and you get no points for that. And it just really, really complements everything mm -hmm. and it all runs through. Yep. You can um, combine cards, sort of the fire and the seed, um, that gives you extra points. Yeah, and sometimes um, the ability to ha to, sh to kill your own plants or your own animals with disease can actually be a benefit at times. Yeah. Uh, which again, mirrors yeah, real life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the natural world. And it's, it's so well thought out all the way through. But should we go into its uh, components? I mean, you've already kind of mentioned a few things, and so have I, but... Yeah. Um, just to refresh. I mean, obviously, it is a card-based um, game. Um, yeah. Yeah, draft-based game. That, um, 
obviously you've got these gorgeous um these meeples minis wooden meeples minis here you've got the jaguar you can see there yeah i think that's, that's the pygmy marmoset and the sloth as well i think uh, yeah. that, i think they're only tamarind. in the deluxe they could be the tamarind or the pygmy marmoset yeah. one of the two uh i think they're only in the deluxe again i'm not sure if the linen finish is only in the deluxe you'd have to check I know these sort of season cards are only in the deluxe as yeah. well, I think, because there are cardboard versions of those that don't have the artwork on there. But again, it's a game with a very cheap price point, so you mm. can't really expect too much no. in terms of the components. But in terms of the, the deluxe Kickstarter edition, I think they are fantastic, especially for the price point. Yes, yeah, I agree. Again, sort of flows onto the <laughs> yeah going on to accessibility uh i think similar to roll camera it's not going to be one that's going to be easily found in your like your amazons and no things like that quick look mm, wasn't there uh yeah i'm not sure how easily available this one's going to be how widely distributed so that might make it a bit tricky to get hold of but if you can find at the price point I think it was thirty, thirty pound in the campaign yeah. for the deluxe edition. So that's good value, I think. I, I mean, it's a bargain in my opinion. I don't usually look at the cheaper card games on Kickstarter because they're usually not very good value mm. in my experience. But this is yeah. I think what you, what you're getting with the thirty pounds is very good. Yeah. Um. So it's a big winner on the price. Um. It's very well. It's quick to set up. I'm not going to say it's easy to set up because similar to a few games, you have to shuffle a ginormous pile of cards. <laughs> yeah. Which, with my wonderful shuffling, inevitably leads to at least one spillage. Yeah. <laughs> which obviously delays it. And obviously you have to make sure the cards are separate so all the seeds are separate from the main yeah. deck. Yeah, and the, the starter trunks are, are separate. Yeah. You don't want to shuffle those in and then you've got to... You're limited on how many types of wildlife, and so if you're using the advanced variant, you can use the basic animals, or you have a mix of six to seven species, which is probably the only thing I don't like about it, because I love the artwork and I love the way it all interacts so much that I want to use everything. Mm. Rather than losing the ten cards. Well, yeah, or I even, mean, or even having because this obviously this is the um, advanced. Um, yeah, so you've got the basic plants yeah. and the advanced plants, but you replace the basic animals with the advanced animals. But I want to use the basic animals mm. as well. I want to use all the cards in there because I love it all. Yeah. But then you then you shuffle it all together and you take ten cards out, and it's like I want those ten cards as well. Mm. <laughs> it's probably Just the only negative I've got. Um, but getting sidetracked a bit, but back to accessibility, I think. I think it was easy to teach. This is one yeah. of the few games I felt confident teaching you. Yeah, very easy to pick up and to teach. Even for newbie gamers, you, you'd learn this pretty quick. Um, as Chris was saying, the set setup's relatively quick. The teardown, again, is relatively quick. Um, yeah, it's just a pile of cards and put them in the box. Yeah. It's, and put the tokens in an envelope. There's, there's nothing to it, really. Um, so it's very easy to get to the table. Especially with theme, because I think that's going to interest a lot of people. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Cheap. Quick to get to the table. Easy to set up and tear down. Easy to teach, easy to learn. It's just how available it's going yeah. to be in retail is probably the only possible negative against mm. it in that, that regard. Uh, On to replayability. Oh, there's... <laughs> the stacks of replayability, replayability. I think. I mean, you've got the basic game you can play, and you can play the advanced game, so you can mix up the cards. And I suppose you're not, you know, you could do what Chris suggested just now and have all the cards available and just play through that. Um, yeah, because I think you only take the cards out so that to control the game length, which yeah. is pretty short as it is. So I don't think anything's sort of set in stone. You can make your own variants of the game uh, the game length yeah we've got the season variant as well which adds a new twist yeah no two games are ever going to be the same um i like yeah the season the season cards are really great i mean particularly that last one there where you can yeah. the extra fourth pile so it gave a fourth pile which obviously changes everything up quite dramatically you have other ones where 
if you don't cap your trees, you lose your trunks. Yeah. There are ones where if you get the tallest tree instead of getting the points, you steal one of your opponent's wildlife. Mm. And, I yes. mean, I suppose that it, that certainly feels like there's a lot of replayability. I guess for me, we've played this six times in two weeks and we've used all the content, which is yeah. unheard of for me. It's the first game I've used everything. And we've used it relatively quickly, partly because it is so easy to learn and enjoyable to play. So I suppose, does that then translate to it still being fun 20, 30 plays down the line? I think it will, because I think the decision making and the strategic element and the risk be reward and... Mm. and there's know, a lot of risk re, re reward in this game. Yeah, because you, you're picking up... Well, there's the better the devil you know aspect that okay, you've got one decent card in your hand. Mm. Do you put it back and gamble on the next pile that may be terrible, but there may not be any other piles left to so say then you have to take it? Or if you know that someone is looking, well, it's something you do to me quite regularly, you know I'm looking for a canopy. <laughs> so you get a, a pile with a canopy, even though none of the cards help you, you take it just to discard it so that I can't cut my tree, for example, which is evil. But very good fun and I think as you get more experienced the more familiar you're certainly going to add that extra yeah. dynamic to it yeah I agree yeah. Um, I agree there's lots as there's so much replayability as so I think yeah there's um, lots of combos I'd love to play with more players as well um, there is a three I mean I know it was designed originally as a two player game uh, originally it, on Kickstarter as two player they have added in a solo and a three and four player variant. Mm. Um, I think you're actually playing teams for that. Yeah, I think that'd be good. So it'd be interesting to try it. The Jaguar could do some real damage. Yeah, you want to get rid of him before the end though. Yeah, so I, I think, oh, you don't play in teams. I think you're just uh, sort of playing around Robin, so. Probably need a round table, not a rectangle table for that. Because <laughs> yeah. this takes up enough table space, actually. It is. It is similar yeah. to villagers. It's it's one you probably don't expect it going in, but it does become a table hog pretty quickly. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, it's covering all the, the width of this table as it is, just for the two of us. Yeah. Um, but I suppose with, with more players, you're taking less cards each, so each person's forest is going to be smaller. Mm. Yeah. Uh, not sure if I like that. No, I, I want to. I just want to make a big forest. Yeah, to play on my own. I don't even want to play the solo rules. I just want to make a big forest. <laughs> yeah, lots I of love rules. it. Yeah. Uh, and while diving into the gameplay, I guess we've probably already touched on that with the replayability. But yeah, what are your thoughts on that? Um, with the gameplay, um, yeah, I think it's um, as we've touched on before. A uh, lot of cards complement each other. Um, you can sort of like mix and mix your tactics um, depending on what cards you draw. Mm -hmm. There's a lot. Of, there is a, a large amount of luck involved. Um, as you, there are always well with a card game, yeah. But you've got to make. I like the way you make the decision as to which deck you choose, um, and whatever card turns up on that deck, it could influence how you set up the rest of your game. Yeah, um, because. You may pick up a load of fire cards, but then that may lead to you to get extra bromeliads because you know you can burn them off later. Or yeah. If you get two diseases, which means it's going to kill two of your animals, you then know, oh, if I get one more, it's only going to kill one of my animals and it's going to kill one of my opponents. So, mm. And then the cards combo off each other. They, I mean, yeah, there is luck base. You always seem to manage to pick up a pile that has... A, a weather combo giving you five instant points. I love the trees where you, you're picking up trunk cards and you're building yes. them up and then you get points at the end of each round for whoever has the tallest tree and then at the end of the game whoever's got the most trees yeah. gets the point bonus. I usually win those points. I don't often win the game but I still like getting those points. The trees have a different like, dynamic to the whole game because then you're thinking about growing growing your trees rather than just you know having certain numbers of number of cards to get the points you're actually concentrating on the trees so you're sort of like got two things in mind while you're playing this game for me the canopies 
and the cards. Yeah. So, yeah, you're, you're yeah. building your trees. And do you go for one giant tree? Do you go for multiple smaller trees? And then you're trying to balance it with the with the plants, mm. which score every, every season. Mm. And then you discard them. Uh, and then you've got the wildlife, which only score at the very end. So... And then obviously the season cards yeah. might throw a different wrinkle in there again. So and then if you haven't got, if you need to be able to cap your trees as well. Yeah. Obviously, it's very yeah, if you can not find a canopy, it's the most frustrating thing. Um, but yeah, there's so many decisions, so much strategy. You constantly having to reevaluate and yeah, pivot and yeah. pirouette and change it. which direction you're going. I I do as well. It it feels very similar to villagers for me. Yeah, um, we love our card games. <laughs> yeah, and I yeah. didn't think I would when I got into this hobby, if I'm quite honest with you. I I didn't think that sort of card game would interest me at all. Mm. I got into it because I like the look of minis and table presence and mm. spectacular designs and whatnot for that. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, both the games, this and villages, are very quick to learn, very easy to pick up and... And Streets, which we'll be recording probably next week, which we had a few games of tonight. I absolutely adored that as well. <laughs> uh, spoiler alert. Um, but this is this is a winner for me, an absolute yeah. winner. Yeah, and for me too. Uh, I like it. I just want to play some more of it, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, me too. And, well, I'm, I probably hazard a guess of what the scores are going to be. But yeah. What are you giving it, Chris? <sighs> I'm trying to think if there's any negatives um, to the game, and there aren't many. <laughs> um, yeah, the only one f for me is that I want more of it. Um, for me... But I'm not marking it down for that. <laughs> no. Oh, it, it's... I think it, I'm going to give it a 10. Um, it is... Me too. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Uh, yeah. I'm going to give it a 10. For all the reasons discussed, the... The art style, the theme, the playability, the replayability, the price point. Um, for all those reasons, I've, I've had such fun playing this game over the last couple of weeks. Um, yeah. And, yeah, it's a game I just, I can imagine us just picking up if you want to play a, a relatively quick game. This yeah, if you be... want, like, an intro or an exit game for a game night, you just want something lighter and quicker at the end to relax or at the beginning to warm up this is perfect just to get yeah. the brain matter going mm. um, and i think you're using a different part of your brain playing this than you would be for sort of like a, a great wall or something like that you, you you know there's i there's probably substance to that to be honest because this is i would say probably the first game we've played a lot together where you've dominated it mm. generally it's either been pretty even or i've one more than yeah. I've lost but with this we played six games I've lost four of them and I've absolutely adored every game whether I've won or lost uh, which speaks volumes of the quality of it but yeah, yeah it's probably the first game that we've played where you've routinely yeah <laughs> beaten I me do, into a pulp I do like sort of tile placement card style games that for me they're my probably my strong suit in board games, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's a 10. It's... it's a 10. It's a 10 for me as well. I think it's phenomenal. And thank you to Tim Eisner for designing it, to be quite honest, because yeah. it, it's... And then you throw in the extra, like, environmentally friendly aspects. and it's... Yeah, it's got to get points for that. It's phenomenal. Expansion packs. <laughs> I haven't heard of any yet. Yeah, we need uh, a, a different rainforest <laughs> or right. some other ecology. You got some snakes in there, I think. <laughs> I don't think it was this one that was talking about Australian animals. I think that was another campaign. I think that was Endangered that was talking about Australian. But we definitely need more of this. So get designing because I want it and I will throw money at you. <laughs> but that is our review of Canopy. As you can tell, we love it and. We hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed speaking about it and playing it, I think. Uh, but that's it. Thank you for watching. Look after yourself. Stay safe and have a good one. Bye-bye now. Thank you. Bye-bye.